you start from zero after you repair the relationship, you establish a new relationship. It's always six figures or seven figures of money that have to be spent is what it is. You spend the money. Uh, and then after you've done that, you bring an integration team on within six months to a year, have good relationship. Like you guys saw that with Google when we announced the, uh, the midnight Google cloud relationship. And it was so crazy. It was like people at the CF are tweeting. It's not even a real relationship. And then our response back was showing the panel with the guy from Google Cloud talking about how the relationship's there. But that's that's it's just like the other problem our ecosystem has is we keep shooting ourselves in the foot. Every time we have good news, there's somebody who shows up and says, it's not as good as you think it is. And right. anytime we have bad news, there's somebody who shows up and amplifies the bad news as worse much than as humanly possible. And, and it's like, what are we doing? The other ecosystems don't do this to themselves. I'm sorry. I don't want to run the race on hard mode like 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay, I just want a fair race. If I'm running, I don't want to have to wear like an 80 pound backpack while the other people are running without that backpack on. Let's stop doing that, guys. How much of that do you honestly think is is based on the, the nature of Cardano being truly decentralized as opposed to, I mean, let's face it, if, if, if you're, let's say you're a venture capitalist, you've got millions or billions of dollars to invest. You want to invest in something you have more control over. You want to invest in something maybe it's a little more on the centralized side like how much of this is because the industry built around the greed and the and the greedy nature of crypto is is opposed to the more decentralized structure and, and just everything that cardano stands for like it, it, how do you think that that really plays a significant role on the back end of things and ultimately filters out through you know it's it's marketing their their media their yeah. social media and so on is that what creates this atmosphere i mean it would if it's just an ada conversation but there's plenty of pseudo federated or or somewhat decentralized but not really projects on cardano that are investable so they would skip ada but then what about the cna ecosystem because it's vastly mispriced if you take a look at it, there's no other asset in the top 10 where the liquidity of the primary asset, ADA, and the value of it is super high, but then the relative value of the, of the assets issued on it's very low. That's a mismatch that's going to get closed at some point once we clean up the ecosystem. So you got a lot of 10Xers or 100Xers that are there. So I think the bigger issue is not decentralization, but I think the bigger issue is that there was never an attempt made to integrate Cardano into the broader cryptocurrency ecosystem in a way uh, that, uh, that, that reflects us well. No one opened up a Silicon Valley office. No one opened up a New York office. No one opened up a London office. Nobody went and had dinner with A16Z. Nobody went and talked to Masari, except for us and a few others. Uh, nobody went and talked to all these big guys and said like, well, hang on, let, let's tell you the Cardano story and why Cardano is interesting and exciting. You know, and everybody says, well, the tech is self-evident. The ecosystem is self-evident. Like, okay, you can, you can have that opinion. But the challenge there is that, is that you can't then complain that the people who invest money and make decisions and write articles about who's the big guy uh, write you off because there, there's, there's 20,000 options. So either you're there, you're talking, or you're, you're not there. And if you're not there, you're not gonna get fair representation. So there's no silver bullet to all of this. You have to do it in layers. One is just get your conference game good and go to all the big things and be well represented. People know that we're real. Two, you have to show that you can write real stuff and build real stuff on Cardano. And there's two parts to that. One, you have to have hackathons on a regular basis. Solana did a phenomenal job with Breakpoint. You know. Midnight was great because we got to look into everybody's dirty laundry. We looked into every network. We dropped eight ecosystems and seven blockchains. So we had to actually know how their technology worked to do the airdrops. So we actually had to deploy Solana wallets and Avalanche wallets and Ethereum wallets and Bitcoin wallets. So we learned a lot in the process. And we also talked to their foundations and engaged with them and saw how they did grow ha growth hacking, what they did well, what they didn't do so well, and so forth. So... In, in addition to doing the hackathons, you also then have to show that there's white glove treatment to the builders in your ecosystem, okay? So if somebody in Solana land has a problem, there's a group of people they can pick up the phone call and say, I don't know how to build this thing. Can you help me? Right now, Cardano, it's MIA, you know, file not found. There's no one at the foundation that does that, and Emergo doesn't do that. And we've always been core developers, so we do it when we can but it burns our people out because they get pulled off of Laos or something and they have to go then answer a question for some third-party app that we have no connection to. 
And the other issue is the minute we start helping them, they advertise that Charles Hoskins is helping them build it and they take it as an endorsement or, you know, something uh -huh. to benefit their ecosystem, right? So there's some issues there with that structure. So we have to change the way we do DevRel, Dev Engagement. And then a corollary to that is the venture capital. That's the third bucket, which is nobody's representing Cardano to the VCs and having that conversation. And, and so we got very bitter about it. And we said, oh, we just don't have the Ponzanomics and these other things. But not all VCs are evil. There's plenty of them that are actually good people, like Outlier or others that we've dealt with in the past, who the only reason they don't consider Cardano is they look at the same metrics that A16Z looks at. They look at a $300 million TVL, a $30 million stablecoin issuance. They look at 50,000 MAU. Well, from their opinion, they're comparing that to Solana at $12 billion in stablecoins, $9 billion in TVL, and multi-million MAU. So they say, well, Cardano's a dead ecosystem, according to those metrics. So there's a metrics problem. And so you have to fix that. And then once you fix that, then you can start engaging. So you go to the, all the big conferences, you have investor dinners, you can get our top 50 apps constantly in front of incubators, accelerators, VCs, and other people. And then the, if they get pitched by 30, 40 Cardano projects, they start realizing that there's a real ecosystem there and it's mispriced. So there needs to be somebody who worries about the, the venture capital side. Fourth, you need the integrations. We're an island. Um, Midnight's fixing 85% of it, and it'll fix probably the rest of the 15%. But Jason, that has cost me personally over $20 million to do all these integrations. And it's not cheap. It's so expensive. And some of the things that are being proposed are in the tens of millions. Um, and, and you go to the foundation, you say, can you pay for this? They say, sure. And then eh, actually we can't, uh, you know, it, it's just the same story again and again and again. So good news, we have a treasury an on-chain treasury and we're starting to utilize that. And I think next year, we'll have a package for a lot of these integration budgets that Midnight is going to cover, but probably cover dollar matching or something like that. And those are one-offs. Once you're integrated, you're integrated. You have the relationship. You're connected together. You're good to go. So that's an ephemeral problem. It's a frustrating one. Somebody had to be the bigger man and bite the bullet. And, uh, and you know, once we have it done, it's easy to use our stuff. And then we can move users around, move liquidity around, and, you know, these types of things. But overall, I, I'd say we're not in a bad position. We're not in a good position. We're in a position of transition. And we as an ecosystem, we have to come together. We have to be vigilant. And every quarter, we have to set aggressive KPIs. How do we get the TVL up? How do we get the MAU up? How do we get the uh, daily transaction volume up? How do we get the integrations where they need to be? And also, how do we take 5, 10, 15 dApps and double them on Cardano? How do we double their stats? Let's get our DEXs better. Let's get our oracles better. Let's get our, our homegrown ecosystem better. Let's let's feel some accountability, responsibility for that. Uh, you know, midnight, we're opening a lot of doors. Like us getting listed means the exchanges support CNAs now. So that massively helps things out because nobody bothered to build that ecosystem up for four years. It was just utter negligence. So we had to go do it. And it was so painful. I, it just, we started from negative 10 in every conversation. And worked our way forward, but now we've gotten those conversations where they need to be and they're taking the ecosystem seriously. So that mostly resolved, uh, you know, a lot of the problems. Talk about shooting yourself in the foot. When we first announced Midnight, everybody said, oh, Charles is abandoning Cardano and it's going to kill Cardano and he's a bad guy and it's a, it's a pump and dump and all this other stuff. And this was coming not from Polkadot or Solana or Ethereum, but from the Cardano ecosystem. And that I think that just because I, I, you know, <clears throat> You're right. And and I think a lot of that just comes from the fact that this market cycle has changed. Everything is changing. Everything yeah. is institutional driven now, it, which, you know, for years, it seemed like every time, uh, you know, Cardano said, well, we're going to launch this big thing and that big thing and that big thing. It always comes, but it generally comes at the peak of a market cycle, right? <laughs> so it's like, well, now if institutions are taking over and we're pushing this into 2026, well, this is, should be the big 2026 should be the absolute biggest year for Cardano ever yeah. because so much of these major things are kicking off. It, you know, starting from early 2026 on. So we, you may have just found your stride ne for next year if everything is changing the way we all expect it yeah. to. 